again, friends. Welcome back to the Parsonage. It's Pastor Don from First United Methodist Church of Brazoria, and here's today's Stay at Home Daily Devotional. The Bible tells us after this, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now, the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, where are we going to buy bread for all these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. And Philip answered him, six months wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to eat a little. Now one of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to them, There's a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many people? And Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves and When he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled 12 baskets. And when the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, this is indeed the prophet who has come into the world, unquote. Well, friends, let's talk about miracles. You see, this passage, well, it's the only miracle story that's recorded in all four Gospels and Well, one of only seven in John's Gospel. In John's Gospel, Jesus' miracles were not about the acts themselves, the special effects, but they were done so as to reveal the divine presence. At the close of his Gospel, John himself stated that purpose explicitly. He speaks of miracles saying, these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. It's, well, it's about transformation by faith, not special effects. And, well, in this story, Jesus' audience wasn't really transformed, just fed. They liked what Jesus had done for them. Quote, when the people saw the sign that had been done, they began to say, this is indeed the prophet who has come into the world. Unquote. Dazzled by the miracle and, well, with full bellies, they then sought Jesus' earthly kingship. Feed us and we'll follow you, in other words. Some years ago, while we lived near Iola, Texas, Beth went into the yard to pick up some sticks and debris. The parsonage, you see, was surrounded by a cow pasture and populated with Texas Longhorns. And, well, when the cattle saw the five-gallon bucket Beth was carrying, they thought it was feeding time. And soon she had a herd following her along the fence line. Like those hungry Longhorns, when we focus just on ourselves and our needs, our short-term situations, our personal gains, well, we can be led dangerously astray spiritually, far from the path of discipleship, and this can result in some very unfortunate outcomes. Consider just a couple here. Uh, What have you done for me lately? Relationship with God. Thinking God works for us. You know, he's expected to do as we demand, picking lotto numbers and, well, damning on command anyone who upsets us. And when God, who thankfully doesn't work that way, doesn't perform as we expected, well, we turn away from him and towards some other God more to our liking. Or maybe we we are led astray to follow some well-appreciated magician or other miracle worker or 
In the case of Beth, someone with a five gallon bucket. In this case with these folks, someone who uses real or emotional or spiritual sleight of hand to trick people into following and to functionally renounce the God of the gospel to the destruction of their souls. Jim Jones in Guyana in 1979 is an extreme example. How about people who are just burned out? They approach all spirituality now with cynicism born of disappointment and victimization. Don't believe what you can't see or touch or test. But you see, friends, Jesus seeks disciples, people who follow from faith, not so much showmanship, people who shoulder their cross just as he did. It's then not about the wonderful miracles that defy explanation. Rather, it's about a God whose love and grace defy explanation and understanding. And well, our human minds have, have great trouble comprehending the true grace and love of God. Now, Jesus, a human being, a man of history, of flesh and blood, can then become our scale model, our analog of God. Jesus' deeds then are God's deeds. We can see through our Lord in His life, ministry, passion, death, and resurrection who God is. And if we focus on who God is, we'll, quote, have life in His name, unquote, and we'll have it abundantly. St. Paul wrote, For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom. But he countered the we demand miracles crowd succinctly. We, he said, proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles, but to those who are called, both Jew and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. That's the message that matters. Christ crucified for us. God died for us. Yes, he is the God of miracles, but really the only miracle that truly matters is that God chose to become one of us, to live our life, to feel our pain, to die our death, that we might live forever. You see, it, it really doesn't matter how many loaves or fish Jesus had to work with or how deep the Galilee was upon which he walked. Friends, it only matters that Jesus loves us so much to give everything that we might live. And understanding that singular, flat, that singular fact, we should bend our knees, bow our heads, and surrender our lives to him as he surrendered his for us. It doesn't get any more miraculous than that. Grace, peace, and good health always, and have a blessed day.